Hi, good evening, and welcome back to Our Wyoming Life. My name is Mike, and today we're hanging out in a dirty stock trailer, which means only one thing, that we have to clean it as we take a second look at the Alcoda hot water pressure washer today on Our Wyoming Life. <laughs> This is just gross, but before we get into the whole stock trailer experience, I want to implore you to do one simple favor for me. If you subscribe to Our Wyoming Life, this channel, make sure you go to the little button down there that says subscribe and click on the bell notification. I was actually alerted this week from YouTube that only 10% of our subscribers are, subscri are actually pushing that bell button, which notifies you if we have a new video that comes out and you get to watch it first. So hit the little bell button so that you don't miss a thing. Now, as we dive into this mess, well, first let's take a look at it. Wait, it gets worse. Alrighty, well, that's just gross. I'll tell you the truth, this isn't the worst that I've seen this trailer. In fact, Jeff just cleaned it not too long ago, but we did have to bring the steers over and weigh them, and when we did that, this happened. This was literally 10 minutes in the trailer for these steers. They didn't take long to messy it all up. So we're gonna actually be cleaning it today with the help of our Alcoda high pressure, hot water pressure washer and it should clean this thing up really nicely. I'm gonna show you some more features about this thing that I didn't get a chance to show you in our first video. And after we get done with this project, we're gonna move in the shop and we're gonna check out a new tool from Alcoda that's gonna help us clean the shop floor. We're gonna get there in just a few minutes. First, we gotta get this thing fired up and ready to wash. A few weeks ago, we had the opportunity to, to pressure wash uh, stock tanks with this thing. And I've really been kind of going nuts on the stock tanks. I've got this one and that one and that one, and I've got them all cleaned up and nice and ready to go with the help of the Alcoda pressure washer. Uh, the Alcoda folks over in uh, Alcester, South Dakota, of course, letting us use this thing and try it out. And I figure as long as I keep finding uses for it, then they're not gonna come take it away from me. I actually really like this thing. It's growing on me the more and more I've used it. Um, obviously, we've cleaned the, the stock tanks with it uh, we've done we've cleaned off tractors we've got the baler cleaned and put away I'll show you that in just a second um, but it's it's really been something that's become really useful here on the ranch and useful for us to be able to clean up uh, everything and we're that's what we're doing we're cleaning all the things with this thing so we're gonna get it fired up we're gonna jump in that stock trailer and start getting that all cleaned up first of all it's not only bright out here but eye protection it's pretty much a must so we've got a bunch of tips to choose from as we get this thing up and going i'm going to stick with my rotary uh, just because i really do like that one and we're going to talk more about how we can control the pressure that we use i think i kind of missed that in the last video that we did with this thing um, a lot of people kind of missed the the point that you can control the pressure i'm going to show you how that works but first let's get it going going it's about 95 91 degrees out here today but I can feel the heat coming off of this thing already I've got it set to about 220 degrees we're gonna let this thing run for just a minute because one of the nice things is that I can actually uh, let this thing run for at least a couple minutes before I relieve the pressure it does kind of build up pressure over time you have just like any pressure washer you do have to hit it occasionally but we're gonna get everything pulled over here and ready to go. I'm bringing over my soap attachment uh, so that we can kind of foam the inside, but first we got to get it wet, obviously. Think of it kind of like the pre-soak, and that's what we're working on to start with. That's my pre-soak. Now I'm going to switch out the tips. We're going to put some soap on it. 
This is the foamer attachment. And we are going to foam the whole dang trailer. So we sprayed foam in. Um, we didn't make a whole lot of foam, and I'll tell you why. It's 95 degrees out here, 91 degrees, whatever it may be. And I think that the, having the hot soap isn't helping much with the foamer. I think that's part of the problem. Not exactly sure I'll have to talk to the guys at Alcoda about it. But we're gonna let this soak in just a little bit and then um, we're gonna come back and clean it all off. But while we're waiting for this to soak in, I'm gonna show you a couple more features uh, of this pressure washer. I'm gonna put my rotary tip back on here really quick. There's a couple of things about this thing I didn't really get a chance to show you guys. First of all, this wand is incredibly long. And the reason it's so long is so that you cannot physically get your hand in front of that thing. Um, like we showed you guys in the last video that we did with the Alcoda pressure washer, we were able to cut through plastic pretty dang easily with one of these tips. Not exactly this tip, but the zero degree tip. And uh, so obviously these things can do some damage. So the length of this wand, while it seems big and cumbersome, it's actually a safety feature to keep you from cutting your dang fingers off. So that's one thing. The other thing I didn't really get a chance to show you guys was this. This is a rotary, basically a dial that you can roll around and it actually changes the pressure on the fly. So if I show you here really quick how this works is I can take high pressure and roll it back to a pretty low pressure. And all I'm doing is just rolling this handle back and forth. And I can change the pressure of the pressure washer as I go. You can hear the pressure change. That's probably the coolest thing about this pressure washer. So, let's get to it. We're gonna clean this half of the stock trailer and compare it to the other half really quick. Oh, one last thing. This is gonna get loud. Stylish, right? Okay. That is incredibly satisfying. If there's any uh, psychologists or psychiatrists or anything that watch our Wyoming life, I would like to know why that is so satisfying. I'm gonna shut off the pressure washer really quick. I'll be right back and we're gonna take a look and see exactly how clean this thing is. 
because here's the thing I only washed half of this trailer in fact I really I mean I did an okay job but there's still more stuff in the front of the trailer which is behind that door like I showed you earlier um, that's actually oozing back this way so the whole trailer does need to be cleaned but I know that Jeff loves running this machine too so we're gonna leave a little bit of fun for him and it gives us an opportunity to see something that is actually pretty cool and that is the difference that hot water high pressure can make check this out that's the other end we didn't touch and there's our nice clean stock trailer big big difference right I asked the folks at Alcoda if it was going to be clean enough to eat off of. They said they wouldn't recommend it, so I'm not going to do that. But it did cross my mind. Alrighty, speaking of eating, we have an event coming up uh, this weekend on the ranch. It's part of the Edible Prairie Project, uh, which is Aaron, my wife's nonprofit, and they are going to be coming out and they're going to be having um, snacks and doing some painting, and it's kind of a fundraiser type deal. And they're going to be doing it in the shop, which means that we had to clean the shop, which we did, which is great. But we also have to clean the floor, and that's where the ne next aspect of the Alcoda comes in. In order to clean the shop floor, we actually have to move the Alcoda over to the shop. So we got to get everything all picked up and ready to go. So here's our soap bottle. Um, I kind of wish it was bigger, honestly. I wish it would hold more soap um, because we it goes you go through it so fast when you're foaming it out like that. So I don't know if they can get a bigger one, but that's my one suggestion so far. So obviously soap does make a lot of difference. Um, you know, 202 degrees or 220 degree water um, is good, but soap is what makes the difference as well. So I think that's something you don't see a lot with a lot of pressure washers is the soap. Most of them come with the attachment, but honestly, do you ever really use it? I never do. So the soap makes all the difference in the world. All right, easy to wind up. Our wand mounts right on the side and we disconnect our water and we're ready to go. Another safety feature this thing has is a brake so it doesn't roll away on you. But right now we need it to roll to the shop. So I have no idea how much this thing weighs, but it's not that hard to move around, which is a good thing since we tend to use it everywhere. And the next place we plan to use it is right here in the shop. <laughs> so this is the shop. It is probably the cleanest it's been in quite a while. And that's all because of this event that Aaron's putting on um, as a fundraiser for the Edible Prairie Project. We want to make sure this place looks good. It's nice and tidy. And that's really what we're going for. But the floor is kind of, well, it's kind of a mess. We've got stains, water stains like this one, oil stains like this one. We've got paint. I don't know if that's gonna come up. Uh, we've got uh, uh, more paint, more oil, dirt, stains. I don't know what this is. I have no idea, but maybe it'll come up. And to do that, we are actually gonna be using this thing. This is the Alcoda surface cleaner, and it basically just hooks right up to the system. Uh, hot water, once again, we're gonna use a little soap and make sure that it does its job. I think what I'm gonna do in here is the same thing that we did out in the stock trailer, and that was to do half of it and see how they compare side by side. So, first off, a little bit of soap. And this time, I'm not using the foamer. I'm actually using just some soap in a squirt bottle that we can spray directly onto the floor. I love these things, by the way. If you've ever had one, 
uh, I don't know what they're called, multi-purpose sprayers, but you, uh, you pump them up to give you the spray juice, see? Again, I wanna do half of the floor, so I'm gonna start out down here and work our way back. That should be enough to give us a side-by-side -side comparison of this bay in the shop. Um, and then we'll end up tackling the whole darn thing, but let's see how she works. So I've already got my water hooked up. I do have to disconnect the wand because we're not gonna use that because we have the, uh, the surface cleaner. So I'll get ourselves. Another kind of cool design deal with this thing is the fact that if you're a different angle or something like that you can actually pull this pin right down here and now I can swivel this whichever way I want and just lock it in somewhere however I want it. How about like that? You do have to be careful because when this thing's going there's hot air coming out of here so you can't put it in the shop. You burn a hole in your ceiling probably burn your shop down but being outside safe as can be, unless you have trees, which we don't. Actually, there used to be a tree right there um, that Gilbert planted almost right next to the building and it grew and uh, yeah, then we didn't have to cut it down because it died, so poor tree. All right, here's our surface cleaner. Ready to go. And we're gonna hook our hose directly to it. I don't think I have my water. Always make sure you have your water on before you turn it on. Okay, that's pretty incredible um, and kind of fun too. We're gonna take a look underneath this thing and actually see how this works. Obviously it's on wheels. Get all my hoses out of the way. And easy to move around, very simple. Um, underneath, we can actually see what's going on. You can see the steam coming out of there. And we have just basically rotating nozzles and the brushes around the outside, which are not only cleaning the floor because the brush is rubbing on the floor, but also keeping a whole bunch of, uh, of water from coming out at the same time. Pretty ingenious design. Okay, so we've washed that half of that bay. Um, we have to get the water off. To do that, we're gonna use a squeegee. We're gonna put it right down this drain, and away it goes. And we're gonna see what this floor looks like. Look at all that dirty, muddy, icky water down there. Okay, so it's gonna take a little while for this side to dry, obviously. Um, I can already see a line, I'm pretty sure I can see a line in between where we cleaned and where we didn't. You can kind of see it right here. I don't know if you can see that line right there though, but as this dries, we'll be able to see it a lot better. 
I'm not gonna wait for it to dry before I'm actually gonna do the rest of the shop. I'm still gonna leave that one side there um, undone so that we can see side by side, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest here and just because I want to play. Okay, surprise here, look at this. This is the thing that I said probably wouldn't come out because it was paint, but it's almost completely gone. 4,000 PSI did that. And the paint that's actually stuck in there is actually coming off just by hitting it with my finger there just a little bit. So that's pretty cool, taking paint right off the floor. take a look here. I wasn't able to get it out completely, but if you compare that to what it looked like before, we got a lot of that out with just high, high pressure, hot water, and a little bit of soap. Amazing how this stuff works. All right, I've got to squeegee this off really quick, and then we're gonna take a look at this side and how that turned out. By the way, if you're ever looking for a squeegee for your floor, Picture, uh, concrete floor like this one. I, I actually went on a, a squeegee hunt, couldn't find what I wanted. Uh, you get those rubber squeegees, they work, but not great. These ones, this is actually a foam squeegee that I got off of Amazon, I think, if I remember right. This has been the best squeegee uh, that I've ever had. And you can put it on different handles, you know, if you have, if, I don't even know if it comes with a handle, honestly. Um, but uh, foam squeegees, they're the way to go. And there we go. The squeegeeing is done. I've got a big stupid grin on my face. And I'm gonna show you three things. I'm gonna show you the other side here in a second. We're gonna take a look at that spot now that it's dry. But I also wanted to show you, I saw this while I was uh, running around with the squeegee here and hopefully you guys can see it, is you can see where I missed. Plain as day. See that line right there? That's where I hit. You can actually see the circle of the surface clear as I came in there and didn't get this part, but got that part. That's impressive in and of itself. The stain over here that I think was paint, almost completely gone. Still a little bit stuck in there, mostly stuck in the rough spots where the concrete's chipped out. But really impressive is this stuff over here on this side where we did a half and half cleaning of the, of the shop. Check this out. You can literally see the difference from that side to that side. This is the side we cleaned. You can see the line. You can see where I went outside the lines. It's all very obvious. The bad part is you can see where I missed too. So I'm gonna end up redoing this whole thing. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna leave this for the night. I'm gonna let it dry completely because I want Aaron to come down here tomorrow and be able to see the difference as well before I completely clean the entire shop. I still have to move that stuff over there, clean underneath that. Eventually I'm gonna have to move cabinets and freezers and everything else and do a super cleaning. So that's pretty cool, very impressive. Good job, Alcoda. The sun is dropping outside. It's about time for me to call it a night. There's still chores to be done tonight. But this thing, pretty dang impressive. 
<laughs> there goes Jeff hiding back there. He's aching to go and finish that trailer. I know he is. So I'm going to cut you guys loose. Thank you for hanging out with me once again. Be sure to subscribe. And if you are subscribed, do me a favor. Hit that bell notification. Hopefully you get notified when new videos come out and you don't miss a thing. And thanks guys once again for exploring the ranch life and escaping the ordinary with us. Be sure to hit that bell for me. Big favor. And until next time, have a great week. And thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. Oh, I want to clean some more.